Hi, this is Dr. O'Connor. Welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. Here we have a problem that states nitrogen monoxide reacts with hydrogen to give nitrous oxide and water. So here we have a chart and we see that we have three experiments. Notice in experiments one and three, we hold the concentration of nitrogen monoxide constant and the concentration of hydrogen has been doubled here. What we need to do here, we're asked to find the rate law, we're asked what is the overall order for the reaction, find the value of the rate constant. So the first thing I can do is I can write a rate law and again this is going to be in terms of reactants. So we have the nitrogen monoxide to some power m. Remember, this is the order, or it does not have any relationship to the coefficients. And then, of course, we have hydrogen here, and that is going to be to some power n. And I forgot to put my rate constant k in here. So here's the rate law. What we need to find are these exponents m and n, which correspond to the order with respect to each reactant. So let's start with experiments one and three. We're going to compare these. And again, the um, concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is constant in both experiments. We double the concentration of the hydrogen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write out, uh, this will be for the third experiment, experiment three. So the rate is going to be equal to K um, times the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide to some power m and times the concentration of the hydrogen which in experiment 3 is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 3 molar and that's to the n power and that's equal to 5.1 times 10 to the negative 5 and that's molar per second. So I'm going to go ahead then and compare that to experiment one and can write the rate for that. That's going to be K equal to 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3 molar for the nitrogen monoxide and then we have 2.2 times 10 to the negative 3 molar to the n power for the hydrogen. And then, of course, this is going to be equal to 2.6 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second. So notice what happens here. Um, the k's cancel. Of course, these two terms here cancel. And so we're left with the hydrogen concentrations and the initial rates here. So let's go ahead and divide these. So when I divide 4.5 times 10 to the negative 3 by 2.2 times 10 to the negative 3, I get 2. And then I have that n power. And then I'll go ahead and divide the initial rates here. That comes to 1.96. And that's approximately equal to 2. Okay. So what we have is we have this 2n or 2 to the n power is equal to 2. So that must mean that n is equal to 1. So I can go ahead and say that the order with respect to the hydrogen is 1. So let me go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and start this rate law. We know we're going to have a k here and we don't know the order yet with respect to nitrogen monoxide, but we do know the order with respect to hydrogen and that's one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for the nitrogen monoxide. This time we'll look at two experiments where the hydrogen concentration is constant and the nitrogen monoxide concentration is changed. And we do that, we look at experiments one and two. And the reason we do this, they vary the concentrations, we want to see how that affects the initial rate. 
and from that we can determine the order with respect to each reactant and of course then the overall order. So here we're going to compare experiments one and two. So I'll just uh, start here with two and the reason I do that is because um, we notice um, here that in experiment two the concentration of nitrogen monoxide has been doubled doubled so um, it, it's just easier to calculate this way so that's going to be K and here we have the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide 12.8 times 10 to the negative 3 molar and that's to the M power and I think you already know what's going to happen the um, when we compare rates 2 and 1 that the hydrogen concentration concentrations are just going to cancel out and we already know that's to the first power and then that's equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4 molar per second. So let's take a look at experiment 1 and that's going to be equal to K Whoops. and over the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3 molar to the M power and of course the hydrogen is 2.2 times 10 to the negative 3 molar to the first power and then we can look at the rate there for 1 and that's 2.6 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second. So here we see that our K's cancel and of course these concentrations here cancel. So let's go ahead and divide the 12.8 uh, times 10 to the negative 3 by 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3 and that's 2. And then we have this m power and then we'll divide the initial rates here and that's 3.8 and that's approximately equal to 4. So we end up with this expression 2 to the power of m is equal to 4. So we know that m is equal to 2. So now we have the order for both reactants. So let me get this here and we'll work with this. And so we are second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to hydrogen. The reaction is third order overall. Now, I think you can see that I don't really need to go through all of this math. Uh, for example, when we're looking at experiments 1 and 2 here, I see that between experiment 2 and 1, the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is doubled, okay? And of course, this concentration for the hydrogen is kept constant. And I see that when I double my concentration of nitrogen monoxide, my rate here or initial rate quadruples and that corresponds to second order so you really don't need to go through all of this okay so let's see we have the overall order for the reaction that's third order and now we're asked to find the value of the rate constant well that's easy we have our rate up here um, right here we have our rate I'm just going to go ahead down here and solve for K. So K is going to be equal to the rate divided by the concentration of nitrogen monoxide to the second power times the concentration of the hydrogen. So what I can do is I just go back to my experimental data and I, I can use the data from either experiment one, two, or three it doesn't matter but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use experiment one here so let's see I have a rate of 2.6 times 10 to the negative 5 so 2.6 times 10 to the negative 5 and that's molar per second and let's see the concentration of my nitrogen monoxide is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3 so 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Remember that's squared. 
and then the concentration of hydrogen from experiment one, 2.2 times 10 to the negative three molar. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and calculate this, 288. And now we have to get our units straight, okay? So here's what we have. In the numerator, okay, we have molarity. And then here, we have molarity squared. And then of course the seconds go down here. And then here we have molarity. So these units then, what we end up with is one over molarity squared times seconds. So the answer here is 288 and I can write this this way or I can write it as 288 per molarity squared times second. Now, significant figures here. I can only have two sig figs in my answer. So this would be 2.9 times 10 to the second. And again, that's per molarity squared per second.